what's going on? Today we are looking at Jason Sean Alexander, and this is another episode of Design Theater. Uh, this guy, I really dig his work, like you'll see in a lot of the other videos if you've seen the stuff that I've been posting. I'm real big into like the, I'm real big into comics because I am a comic artist. But specifically, I'm really big into the black and white comic artists. Um, I like the way it is that you can create this really cool mood with just using the stark black and white uh, tones and, and maybe maybe a little bit of a mid-tone, but using line, using shape uh, to really convey an emotion. And I, I like this guy's work because it's he's very anatomically precise. He's very good with faces. He's very good with expressions. Um, but he's also very abstract and he's loose with the work that he does, right? So the stuff that he does feels like Phil Hale, which I'll talk about at some point. I really dig his work. Or it feels like uh, Ashley Wood, who's somebody that I, I've already done a, an analysis of that I'll actually link to here in the video if you look up at the cards. I'll just make a note of that for myself. Um, but anyway, let's go ahead and let's take a look at some of this guy's work. I'm going to try to keep these videos short, and then I'm going to be doing more in-depth analysis of them in, a, in, in another playlist. Um, but actually, let's go back to this other one. This first one, I mean, I really dig, whoa, I really dig the work that he did on Spawn. And, and like I said, you know, it's really cool that he has like these big black shapes and he can cut out the shapes of, you know, the armor on Spawn and these kind of like twisting, gnarled shapes that he has. And he can do all that with black and white. And it just adds so much to it, man. Like his style feels very abstract in the sense that like this starts to almost feel cartoonish in the way that this is splayed out in the background. Right? But he still gets across the essentials of what it is that you need to understand in order to see what's going on in this panel. Let's, let's go through some of these other ones. I believe this is his work. I'm not 100% sure on that. I believe it is. I believe this was a piece he did for Sandman. Really cool. I think this is one of the X-Men zombie comics he did. You know, like, I, I love the... the the ability that you have to kind of lose the background in either black shapes or in just complete white shapes whenever you do black and white. I'm not sure if he was the artist that did Curse of Spawn or not. Um, I'll, I think maybe he did. I'm going to have to go and look up the artist for Curse of Spawn because I was such a huge fan of it. But like this is what I'm talking about. Like His covers are just really cool. They're not what you would expect from a comic cover artist. You know, these, these feel really unique. You know, he uses like two different tones. He's got one character in the background here who's got like this blue tone and then we have this foreground character that has an orange tone so there's a good contrast with just a white background. It's very cool. It almost feels like a photo manipulation or like a photo collage or something. Some more spawn stuff. Yeah, you know, I think the tendency when we do black and white stuff is to, especially if it's abstract uh, comic work, is to kind of let the let the perspective go and just keep the background abstract. But I like that he doesn't do that. You know, he's very precise with his with his understanding of perspective, and it really shows in his work. love this guy's stuff. And then, like I said, he does kind of like these these kind of pieces. I'm trying to remember who the artist was that inspired Silent Hill. 
Um, he had some art that was similar to this, but, that, but that's what it is that this reminds me of. It just feels, it's just creepy. It's weird, uh, weird little painting. Here's another, here's another cover. I think this is more in line. Oh man, the quality of that's really bad. I apologize. But from a distance, it looks awesome, right? We've got some Batman stuff that he's done, I guess. Which is really cool. Here's another, another one of these paintings that he's done. I feel like this has got to be for like Candyman or something. I don't know. With the hooks back here and with the, the use of the yellow, I don't see any, I don't see any bees, but maybe. Yeah, like I said, you know, I'm a huge fan of all the black and white kind of comic book artists because I myself am a comic artist and I am going to go ahead and put in the card notes if you want to see some of the process on the comic that I'm working on, which is the Philip K. Dick Files. It's a series of black and white sci-fi horror comics based on the short stories of Philip K. Dick, who wrote Blade Runner, Minority Report, these different films that have had a huge impact on us. But I really like looking at this sort of stuff, these artists, and, and trying to learn what it is that I can and take that and apply it to my own work. And I find that it, it really helps, really helps with understanding like how they're able to uh, convey so much with just black and white shapes, right? So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and call it for this one today. Uh, thanks guys for watching. If you have an artist it is that you would like for me to cover, feel free to drop a comment in the description box and uh, let me know what it is that you think about this guy's work. Like, subscribe, and uh, yeah, let's hang out. Let's look at some cool art. Thanks guys. Take it easy.